One of the things to think about as you go through this process is what's on the horizon from a research point of view. And probably the best way to think about this is the concept of bench to bedside, meaning we take things from basic laboratory discovery and we translate them into the ability to give those back to patients in the form of clinical trials, experimental therapeutics as we call it. Let me give you a, a very good example of the field, how it's evolved. This is what we call targeted therapy. So using the information that we have gained from our understanding of the human genome, we now know that there are 30,000 plus genes comprising the human genome. Not all of those genes participate in the process of cancer. Of course, some of those genes are responsible for making proteins such as insulin, which regulate sugar control, for example. But there are a number of genes that we're actively searching for now that are involved with the process of oncogenesis or tumor formation. Likewise, there are a number of genes we're looking for now that are responsible for tumor suppression, so-called tumor suppressor genes, which prevent cells from acquiring damage to DNA and forming tumors. So with that in mind, there is a huge discovery underway now in which we've identified a number of genes, thousands of genes, that have to do with either tumor formation or tumor suppression. Those genes make proteins, and some of those genes make more than one protein. And so the critical thing for research now is to pursue our understanding of not only the gene alterations in cancer, but also the protein products that these gene alterations make, because ultimately the protein product is what drives cancer formation or suppression. So with that in mind, for example, one of the big discoveries in recent years has been the pathway that regulates growth of high-grade tumors such as glioblastomas or anaplastic astrocytomas or anaplastic oligodendrogliomas. And this involves the target known as epidermal growth factor and its receptor. Through the work of industry, for example, Industry has developed small molecules that block these receptors and prevent the binding of the protein to the receptor and therefore prevents the endpoint of that interaction, which, for example, in this case means proliferation or cell division, turning one cancer into two, two into four, four into eight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is just one pathway that has so far shown some very interesting promise in blocking that pathway using a small molecule inhibitor. Another example is Avastin. This is a compound, a small molecule inhibitor in the form of an antibody that blocks the signaling in a tumor of new blood vessel formation, also known as angiogenesis. So Avastin blocks this pathway and therefore shuts down angiogenesis and therefore has shown some dramatic responses in high-grade gliomas. Now to date, most of this work has involved single molecules, one drug or the other. But now we realize that that's not enough. We have to block multiple pathways at a given time. So now we're going to start looking at what we call combinatorial therapy, more than one agent at a given time, sometimes one agent that blocks three or four pathways together. And this is what the whole area of phase one clinical trials are, where we look at toxicity and phase two clinical trials, where we look at efficacy before doing a big randomized phase three study, looking at the best treatment we have to date versus the newest experimental therapy, pitting one versus the other, so-called. So what's happened here is that with the evolution of our understanding of genomics and proteomics, we have tremendous hope now that we 
have found pathways that are absolutely peculiar to brain tumors and not potentially peculiar or important for breast cancer. And this is why research involving organ-specific disease is absolutely critical. We can't lump all these tumors together. We have to separate brain from breast and prostate because they all have separate pathways. So that's very important to keep in mind. But with the identification of these aberrant genes and their protein products, we now have tremendous hope and potential that we're going to find these new small molecule inhibitors that are gonna make an impact on the disease. You could say the same thing about immunotherapy and the field of vaccines. Because in order to have an effective vaccine, we need a target on the tumor cell which can be attacked by the immune system. So our ability to understand the genes and their abnormal products, the proteins, those are the targets by which we can make specific vaccines that can make an impact on this disease. So I think you're gonna see a lot of advances in immunotherapy in the form of a tumor vaccine or tumor vaccines that go after these newly identified targets and with small molecule inhibitors. The other area where you're gonna see lots of uh, advances, I think, is in the area of drug delivery. For example, now we give things by pill or by vein, and many of us feel that's not the optimal way to give these drugs. The better way is probably to actually put the drug directly into the tumor. That's a surgical technique called convection enhanced delivery, or CED. And what it basically means is we put a tube into the tumor and then we pump the compound slowly over a matter of days into the tumor to actually get it there without having the drug cause toxicity in the bone marrow, for example, which is what happens with the intravenous or the oral route. So you're going to see more and more new therapies that have as a component of it this surgical technique where we put a catheter in place and we convect or deliver these drugs.